Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel Ebus. What's it doing now? I'm still unfortunately having problems converting my video files over to the editing software for me to complete the APU briefing. I'm getting there and I'm hopeful of getting that out to you in the next few days, like I say. In the meantime, however, I came across a really interesting presentation by Airbus and it talks about the importance of a thorough walk around and events that have happened on Airbus aircraft that could have been avoided by a thorough walk around. And they specifically look at those items and the items that are covered are PITO obstructions and unreliable airspeed of events that have happened uh, in flight, ice secretion on the forward fuselage and around the nose, which have caused the same um, unreliable airspeed uh, events. Talk also about the uh, fan cowls and ensuring that the latches are securely closed and some of the initiatives Airbus have put in place to help pilots confirm that they are closed both visually and on the 320 NEOs uh, on the ECAM. And they also have a look at the importance of ensuring that the drain masks are cleared and the radio altimeter receivers are cleared as well. So I'll just run the video. I thought it would be a, a useful video to watch as it's something that when we do get flying, we do every day. And just to highlight the importance of those specific areas and um, done thoroughly and properly can avoid some of the events that uh, have occurred in the past. Thanks very much for watching and speak soon. Hi and welcome to this short briefing. We are going to speak about some specific items of the exterior walkaround. While there were several events reported to Airbus that were related to the walkaround, we will only refer to those we considered necessary to highlight. Some of the incidents could have been avoided if these items had been detected during the walkaround inspection. The exterior walkaround, as per Airbus SOP, is performed by the flight crew before each flight. The objective is to obtain a global assessment of the aircraft status by checking for missing parts, leaks, abnormal conditions, etc. Please note that the illustrations available in this video are basic illustrations and may not correspond to the exact configuration of your aircraft. So let's start with probes and ports obstruction. From time to time, pitot probes and static ports contamination is reported to Airbus. Dirt deposit, distortion and markings on or around static ports or even a non-flush static port can cause aerodynamic perturbation affecting altitude reading. For AIN objects in the pitot probes have also been reported to Airbus. As you can see here, a probe was found obstructed by sand or dust which can be a result of insect activities. This obstruction will result in inaccurate speed measurements. We know you cannot specifically analyze the interior of a pitot probe from the ground. However, you can have a general perception of its condition during the walk around. While speaking about pitot probes, let's highlight the issue about ice ridges. The main cause of ice ridges on the lower nose fuselage of the aircraft is ice accretion during a long stay on ground in cold conditions. You can see here an example of thin ice ridges forward of the pitot probes of an A320 family aircraft. Most of the events related to the ice ridges occurred during the first flight of the day. Ice ridges may be dislodged during the flight or may remain attached to the lower nose fuselage for the entire flight. Another possible cause of ice ridges is snow that melts on a heated windshield and then refreezes again in the form of ridges on the lower fuselage. It is important to be aware that these ice ridges on the forward fuselage can disturb the airflow around the static, pitot and angle of attack probes. This can result in airspeed data to be at a value that is significantly lower than the actual airspeed. The consequence may be an unreliable airspeed situation from takeoff or later during the flight. The FCOM and the FCTM highlight the need to pay special attention to this area when you perform the walk around in cold weather conditions. If the flight crew observe even thin ice ridges, they must ask the ground personnel to remove them before departure. 
Moving towards the engines, let's have a look at the fan cowl latches. The fan cowl is part of the engine nacelle. During the walk around, check that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. The fan cowl is correctly closed when all latch handles are aligned and flush with the fan cowl external surface. Airbus has had reports of around 50 fan cowl doors lost in flight. The investigation confirmed that in all cases the fan cowls were opened by maintenance prior to the flight. They were not correctly closed. During the walk around, this was not detected. As illustrated, in flight loss of fan cowl door can damage the aircraft. It may also cause injury to persons on the ground due to the detached engine coal parts. Following these reports, and to avoid human error, Airbus took a number of initiatives. For example, a new latch with key and remove before flight flag on the A320CO and the 330 Neo aircraft, and a new ECAM message on the 320 Neo aircraft. Keep in mind that on some aircraft with lower engine height, you may need to crouch down to get a better view of the latches. Another item we would like to highlight is the radio altimeter antenna. While on the 350 and 380 aircraft there are three radio altimeters on the forward fuselage, there are only two on a 300, 310, 320, 330 and 340 aircraft. Each of them has a transmitter antenna and a receiver antenna located on the lower aft fuselage. Erroneous radio altimeter values have resulted in early flare activation during approach. One of the main causes identified was contamination on the lower fuselage. This can be due to dirt or ice accretion on the radio altimeter antennas. Also remember that the drain mast is located on the lower fuselage. For this reason, the cabin crew should not pour any thick, dark or acidic liquid in the galley and lavatory sinks in order to avoid contaminating the lower fuselage. Although the antenna surface is cleaned regularly by scheduled maintenance, it does not prevent you from carefully checking for any dirt or anomalies during the exterior walk around. Finally, when looking at the upper fuselage, make sure your ELT antenna is still there. Airbus has had reports from operators who have lost their ELT antenna usually after five or seven years in service. This is mainly due to corrosion in warm and humid regions. To conclude this briefing, you can see that the exterior walkaround is one of the last opportunities to visually detect any anomalies. A correctly performed walkaround in accordance with the FCOM procedures is essential to ensure a safe and efficient flight. I hope you enjoyed this briefing on the exterior walkaround and see you around soon for the next one.